हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सचिन गुरुळे असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जुलॉजी के टी एच एम कॉलेज नाशिक इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ एस वाय बी एस सी ऑफ सब्जेक्ट एनिमल डायवर्सिटी थर्ड वी हॅव लर्न द रेस्पायरेटरी सिस्टम ऑफ द स्कॉलिडॉन दॅट इज द इंडियन शाय अँड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोईंग टू लर्न द external and internal structure of heart which is the part of circulatory system so let's see the external structure of the heart of scolidon now the heart of scolidon is reddish brown in color it is conical and that heart lies mid ventrally beneath the pharynx in the head region so the heart of the scolidon it is located at the mid ventral region in the head part of their body now this heart is a simple dorso ventrally bent s shaped muscular tube and it lies in a cavity that cavity is known as pericardial cavity this pericardial cavity bounded by the two layered membranous pericardium so this pericardium is there and that pericardium is encloses a cavity which is referred as the pericardial cavity in which the heart is located now in it is a median triangular cavity lying between the gills with the apex directed forwards and is almost completely occupied by the heart only so complete portion of this pericardial cavity is enclosed by that heart of scolidon now the heart of scolidon contains only deoxygenated blood hence it is also called as the venous heart venous heart or the branchial heart because the pump is uh, this heart is receiving the deoxygenated or one can say used blood from the various body parts and it pumps that deoxygenated blood into the gills for its oxygenation and hence whatever heart uh, whatever blood which come into the heart of that scolidon it is the deoxygenated one and it is pumped towards the gill for the oxygenation means the blood contains the deoxygenated type of blood hence it is referred as venous or is referred as a branchial heart branchial heart because it pumps the blood towards a branchial that is gills region and so this is the introduction now heart of the scolidon is four chambered again the four chambered heart is a characteristic feature of the chondrichthyes species and it contains a chamber which are namely sinus venosus then atrium atrium is also known as the auricle then the ventricle which is the third compartment or the third chamber and the fourth one is conus arteriosus so in this way there are total four chambers we can say the two major chambers and two accessory chamber accessory chamber include the sinus venosus and the conus arteriosus so let's see one by one first of all the sinus venosus now this sinus venosus is somewhat a triangular so you see see here in this diagram you can see it is somewhat a triangular shaped chamber it is thin walled and the posterior most chamber so if you see this pericardial cavity which contains the heart the chamber known as a sinus venosus which is located at the posterior most part of the heart and this extended transversely and lying at the base of pericardial cavity so here you can see so this is a pericardium and that pericardium enclosing a cavity which is known as a pericardial cavity and towards the pericardial cavity at the posterior end you can able to found the first chamber of the heart which is known as the sinus venosus now this sinus venosus is fused with that of the pericardium so here in this diagram you can easily see or in this ls also so our sagittal section you can see the walls of the sinus venosus is get fused or uh, get attached with that of the pericardium now laterally this sinus venosus receives a two large veins 
so here this one is the first vein and this one is the second vein these veins are referred as ducticuary or they are also referred as equarian ducts so these are the major two large veins opens into the first chamber that is sinus venous now this each duct one on each side one from the left side and one from the right side while in addition to this cuarian duct it also receives the blood from a two small sinuses which is coming from the liver actually and these are referred as the hepatic sinuses now this hepatic sinus opens into it in the posterior middle line so this is a median area of the um, this sinus venuses where this hepatic sinuses are also open now this sinus venuses opens anteriorly into the atrium so called as a auricle so this is a auricle so here in the sagittal section you can see the heart is somewhat yes shaped tube and this is a posterior most part that is sinus venuses and this sinus venuses is opens into the auricle so in this section ventral view you cannot able to completely uh, uh, expose towards the auricle so this auricle is just beneath the this ventricle and the conus arteriosus but in sagittal section you can see this blood from the sinus venuses is goes into the auricle so sinus venuses opens into the atrium or the auricle by a aperture obviously this aperture is referred as sino auricular aperture and that aperture is always guarded by a pair of membranous wall and that wall is referred as sino auricular wall or it is also referred as a sino atrial wall you can pronounce in either way so these valves prevents a black back flow of the blood back into the sinus venous so this is a wall which is responsible for preventing that back flow of the blood means blood once coming from the sinus venous into the auricle it never goes back into the sinus venous due to the presence of these two wall this sino atrial wall are highly contractile one and the beating of the heart it originate from this heart we can say this is the region which is referred as the pacemaker pacemaker is the generally the region we can define where actually the rhythmic wave of contraction into the heart it start which is not referred as the pacemaker so here in case of the heart of scolidon this sino atrial valve it is the region from which the wave of contraction into the heart is begins so this is about the first chamber known as the sinus venuses then second one is the auricle now auricle is a large triangular sac so here you can see, see in the sagittal section is a large triangular sac lying in front of the sinus venuses so this is a sinus venuses and in front of that sinus venuses there is a atrium or so called as the auricle now this auricle occupies the dorsal half of the pericardial cavity so this is a pericardium and it enclosing a cavity known as a pericardial cavity and if you see this is the dorsal portion of the pericardial cavity it is completely enclosed by this atrium so called as the auricle now its wall are somewhat thicker than that of the sinus venuses if you compare the walls in this sagittal section you can easily see the walls of the sinus venuses are comparatively smaller than that of the walls of the auricle particularly in their thickness now its lateral posterior angles are produced into the processes which projects laterally at the sides of the ventricle like that of the ears and it opens into the ventricle through the aperture now this aperture is referred as auricular ventricular aperture because it, this aperture is present in between the auricle and ventricle so this auricular ventricular aperture this is also guarded by the bilabiate wall this again the function of that bilabiate wall is to prevent back word flow of the blood back from the ventricle to the auricle means again 
once this aperture is get open or the wall is open whatever blood which is contain into the auricle it enters into the ventricle and once it is enter into the ventricle it never comes back into the auricle and that backflow is prevented by this bilabiate wall which is present between the auricle and ventricle or the aperture is known as auriculoventricular aperture so this is about the second chamber that is known as the auricle now the third chamber of the heart of scolidon is known as a ventricle so which is the most prominent and pear shaped chamber of the heart of a scolidon it has a very thick muscular wall again if you see the thickness of the wall of the different chambers into the heart you will found that the walls of the ventricle they are the thickest one as compared with the walls of the other chamber the inner surface of the ventricle is produced into the numerous muscular strand which gives it a spongy texture so here you can see the spongy texture of that ventricle from the inner side the opposite wall are held in place by the structure which is known as the cordy tendon so these are the cordy tendon which is responsible for holding the opposite wall in their proper position it also protects the ventricle to expand beyond its capacity means this cordy tendon has the important role in the relaxation of the or the expansion of the ventricle also now it communicate dorsally with the auricle through the auriculoventricular aperture and with the anterior side it communicates with the last chamber of the heart which is known as the conus arteriosus so this is a conus arteriosus the so the blood once comes into the ventricle it goes into the next chamber known as the conus arteriosus so let's see first of all the conus arteriosus again the conus arteriosus is a stout muscular tube this one is a muscular tube which arises from the ventricle and it extends up to the anterior end of the pericardial cavity so this is the anterior end of pericardial cavity and this one is a posterior end at the posterior end there is a sinus venosus and at the anterior end there is conus arteriosus so its inner walls are provided with the two transverse rows of the semilunar wall so here in this diagram you can see the semilunar uh, semilunar wall each row containing further three walls one located at the dorsal and two are ventrolateral in their position now in addition to these there is always a small accessory wall on e either side of the dorsal wall so this semilunar wall is well developed here and which is lies in between the ventricle and the conus arteriosus the walls of the anterior row they are larger than that of the posterior row and whatever free ends of the walls are there these are always connected with the walls of the ventricle by a fine tendinous thread to keep a valve in their proper position so these walls again prevent the backflow of the blood into the ventricle means again once the blood from the ventricle it pumps into the vent and this conus arteriosus it is never came back into the ventricle this is due to this pair of a semilunar wall the conus arteriosus is continue forward through a wall of pericardium uh, and this tube is referred as a ventral aorta so this ventral aorta is responsible for transporting the deoxygenated blood which is pumped by the heart towards the gill for their oxygenation so this is about the external and the internal structure of the heart of the scolidum then how it works so let's see the working of the heart of scolidum as already mentioned the heart of scolidon is a venous type since it receives only the venous or so called as deoxygenated blood from the various parts of the body via the two major veins 
<clears throat> and that opens directly into the sinus venosus. The blood also flows through the heart only once. Hence, whatever circulation which is shown by the heart of the scolidon is referred as a single circulation. Means the blood is circulated only once through the heart and such a kind of the circulation we call as the single circulation. The heart pumps the venous blood into the gill for the purpose of aeration so called as the oxygenation and for this purpose the different chambers of the heart rhythm uh, rhythmically contract at a regular interval in a definite sequence. The contraction of heart is called as the system while the relaxation of the heart is known as the diastole and the blood flow of the heart it occurs into the definite way means the one's blood coming from the different body parts into the sinus venosus it always enters into the auricle then it goes into the ventricle from ventricle it enters into the conus arteriosus and from conus arteriosus it enters into the ventral aorta and via the ventral aorta by the afferent arteries it goes into the gills for the oxygenation. Now the chambers of the heart of scolidon they are categorized into the receiving chamber and forwarding chamber. So there are two receiving chamber. The first receiving chamber is sinus venosus and second one is a auricle while the forwarding chamber means the blood for uh, the blood is flows towards the uh, for their oxygenation by the two chamber and that name of two chamber is ventricle and the conus arteriosus. So let's see how exactly the heart works. Now heartbeat obviously starts with the sinus venosus. We have seen the sinoauricular ball which is acting as a pacemaker in case of the heart of scolidon from which the wave of rhythmic contraction is initiated and which is then subsequently spread on the sinus venosus by contracting the walls of sinus venosus. Once the contraction occurs, the blood is forced directly into the auricle through the aperture which is guarded by the wall which is known as the sinoauricular wall and now after the complete contraction of sinus venosus blood enters into the uh, auricle so this is a sinus venosus in this uh, diagram you cannot able to see the sinus venosus actually so <clears throat> it receives the blood from the cuvarian duct and the hepatic sinuses and through which it enters directly into the auricle now once auricle receives the blood from the sinus venosus, this auricle goes under the contraction and forcing its blood into the ventricle through the aperture known as auriculoventricular aperture. Again, this aperture is also guarded by the wall, which is a bilabiate wall known as the auriculoventricular wall. Now, after that, the entry of blood into the ventricle now the wave of rhythmic contraction is goes or spreads over the ventricle and then walls of the ventricle starts contracting and once the ventricle is get contracted blood forces into the next chamber that is known as the conus arteriosus and here also the back flow of the blood is prevented by the bilabiate wall. Now these walls are referred as semilunar wall. So once the blood coming into the ventricle and when it is get contracted, it forces its bloods into the next chamber known as the conus arteriosus. Now from conus arteriosus, blood again passes into the forward direction towards a ventral aorta. So this is the ventral aorta which is located at the anterior most part of the pericardial cavity. Now once the blood from the conus arteriosus it enters into the ventral aorta this ventral aorta they are provided with or they supplied with a different afferent branchial arteries and these afferent branchial arteries they pass the deoxygenated blood coming from the heart towards the gill for the purpose of oxygenation and the walls of the heart are also supplied 
the oxygenated blood via the coronary artery but this oxygenated blood is provided to the heart only after its oxygenation so in this way the heart of the scolidon works the there are two receiving chamber sinus venosus and the auricle while remaining two that is ventricle and the conus arteriosus which are acting as the forwarding chamber so this is about the working of heart and in this lecture we have learned the external internal structure of the heart and the working of heart so thank you thank you very much